All right. All right. Yeah, grab out, uh, pull out your Bibles, notebooks. All right, so today's topic is the betrayal against the God of Israel. All right, today's title is the betrayal against the God of Israel. All right. Uh, throughout the course of time and throughout our history, we are good for that, okay? And we also have to realize, you know how I do always, tie it in with what? Normally how we treat each other, how we, uh, our relationship between the Most High. All right, so let's let's get to it. Let's get to it. Give me the book of First Chronicles chapter 17 and verse 5. We're going to start right there. First Chronicles chapter 17 and verse 5. First Chronicles chapter 17 and verse 5. Good. For I have not dwelt in an house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day, but have gone from tent to tent and from one tabernacle to another. Right. So the Most High God, he says he has not dwelt in a house since he brought us out of Egypt. He said he went from tabernacle to tabernacle. All right. Read on. Wheresoever I have walked with all Israel, spake I a word to any of the judges of Israel, mm -hmm. whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why have ye not built me in house of cedars? Come on. Now, therefore, thus shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, even from the following of the sheep that thou shouldest be ruler over my people Israel. Mm -hmm. And I have been with thee whithersoever thou hast walked and have cut off all thine enemies from before thee. Come on. And have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are in the earth. Right. So the Most High God, he's telling us he's made us a name of renown. He made us known in the earth All right, by destroying all of our enemies and showing favor with us. Come on. Verse 9. Also... I will ordain a place for my people, mm -hmm. Israel, and will plant them. And will do what? And will plant them. Read. And they shall dwell in their place and shall be moved no more. Read. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them anymore as at the beginning. Come on. And since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people, Israel, moreover, I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I tell thee that the Lord will build thee an house, and it shall come to pass when thy days be expired that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom. Verse 12, he shall build me an house, and I will establish his throne forever. Uh, brothers, who is this talking about? Hmm. Mm, yeah. Uh, they want to be deep. Who is it talking about? Okay. Let me see a brother who actually knows the history. Who is this actually talking about right here about building the uh, temp the uh, house? Uh, brother, yeah, David. They, they're being super deep right now. Let's just keep it in context. Hey, the Shalom leadership on Solomon. King Solomon, yes, King Solomon. That's who it's talking about. Yes, when it says his throne shall be established forever. Yeah, that's talking about Christ. We understand that. All right, let's read on. Verse 13, I will be his father, and he shall be my son, and I will not take my mercy away from him, mm -hmm. as I took it from him that it was before thee. Uh, do me a favor, jump down to verse 21. Verse 21, and what one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel? Right. So the Most High is saying, what uh, one nation is like his people Israel? Read on. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel, whom God went to redeem to be his own people? To be his own people. Read. To make thee a name of greatness and terribleness by driving out nations from before thy people, whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt. Right, so you have to understand, when uh, what is that? When you read Joshua, the second chapter, Rahab, the harlot, she she put us on game. She's like, hey, we heard about what God did for y'all, uh, how he destroyed those nations when y'all fled out of Egypt. So understand this, through the power of the Most High God, all right, he made us feared through all the earth, all right? Do me a favor, drop that. Let's go to um, Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. And as, as you get that, I'm going to read this again in uh, 1 Chronicles 17 and 9. It says, 
Also, I will ordain a place for my people Israel and will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place. Read what you got, Psalms. Psalms, chapter 1. You want me to start at verse 1? Mm hmm. And verse 1. Come on. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, Read. nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Mm -hmm. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Watch this. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whithersoever he doeth shall prosper. Right. So whatever this man doeth shall prosper. Why? Because his delight is in the law of the Lord. Now, the issue with the nation of Israel is that what? Our delight was not in the laws of God, was it? What was our delight in? Who, has, who, who reads the Bible a little bit out here? What do we like to do? Okay, so that would be you, 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 all of you men, all of you talking to you what did we like to do oh thank you for calling out we appreciate you who, who has a hand let me hear this brother right here yes shalom leadership shalom. We, like to, we like to uh imitate other nations we like to imitate other nations that's an excellent answer right there the other nations have what the other nations serve what Idols, I guess that's better. Serve what? They serve idols. So we coveted after those idols. The other nations had something else. They also had something else when it came to how they governed their cities. They had what? Let me see who studied. Let me hear Mordecai. If he gets it, shame. I'm going to say shame on all of you. This is a teenager. What did they have, Mordecai? They also had like kings. Kings. You see that thing right there? Also had kings. Is that how the Most High God ordained us? No. He gave us a king. Why? Because we asked for it. Because we wanted to be like who? We want to be like the other nations. Very good, Mordecai. What I call? Still in the first Psalms? Yeah, give me Psalms 1 and 2 and 3 together. The book of Psalms, chapter 1 and verse 2. Come on. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Come on. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. All right, from there, go to Sirach chapter 10, verse 19. Ecclesiasticus chapter 10, verse 19. <clears throat> did y'all do a class last week or y'all just did a quiz? What'd y'all do last week? Let's went over some questions. Did y'all ask them to answer? Because they look like they went back to sleep. Gone for one week, they go back to sleep. Read the scripture. Sirach chapter 10 and verse 19. Come on. They that fear the Lord are a sure seed. So the Bible says those who fear God, they are a sure seed. Come on. And they that love him, an honorable plant. You see that? They that love him, an honorable what? Plant. An honorable plant. God planted us, right? But what did he have to do? He had to root us up because of our wickedness and our betrayal against him. Read that all the way through. Verse 19. Come on. They that fear the Lord are a sure seed. It says, they that fear the Lord, they are a sure seed. Come on. And they that love him, an honorable plant. Mm -hmm. They that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed. Right. But they that do not regard the law, they are a dishonorable seed. Read. They that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed. From there, let's go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 21. So today's topic Today's topic is the betrayal against the God of Israel. Okay, and we're going to show you that everything goes hand in hand because that spirit is still on the earth today. That spirit is still on the earth today, but all praises, this is the last captivity. But in the second, on the second half of that, it's scarier because there ain't going to be as much time with, for, for the nonsense anymore. Okay, uh, what I call Jeremiah 2. All right, read that. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse... 21. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 21. Come on. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine. So when it all it was all said and done at the beginning, God set us up to be noble. Does anybody know what noble means? Look that definition up, post it for us. James, what you got? Microphone to James. Noble. Shalom. It just means honorable, um, held in highest name. Yeah, held to a high standard, high esteem, very good. Uh, blow it up, please. Please make it bigger. Um, 
Noble. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, let's go with the, the second one. It says, having or showing fine personal qualities or high moral principles and ideals. Our principles would be what? The laws of God. There you go. The laws of God. That's what makes us honorable or have that form of nobility. All right, read it again. Description. Verse 21. Uh huh. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine. Come on. Holy, a right seed. A right seed. That's that sure seed. Come on. How then art thou turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? Right. How did we turn into what we are today? How did we even get over to this side of the earth? Because we did not esteem God's laws as they should have been esteemed. We were that, what, disloyal, uh, dishonorable seed, okay? Uh, from there, go to Isaiah, the fifth chapter. We're going to start at verse 1. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1. All right. Read that. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 1. Come on. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, mm -hmm. and he fenced it and gathered out of the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it shall bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Right. So he set us up to what? Be fruitful, to bring forth uh, fruits of righteousness and repentance. But what happened? We brought forth wild grapes okay so basically the most high god he made a way for us he killed our enemies he put us in the best of the land and we did what we turned our back on the uh, on the most high god all right read on verse four, verse three read and now O inhabitants of jerusalem and men of judah judge i pray you betwixt me and my vineyard what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? So he's saying, what could I have done for this people? I gave them riches, you understand? I destroyed many kings, many great nations before them. Um, what else did the Most High God do for us? He, he holds still the, um, the sea for us, you understand? Let us walk through on the sea floor and then made it collapse on our enemies. Right, right, the pillar of fire by night. You understand? He guided us through the wilderness. He's done all of these great things for us. Read the verse again. Verse 4. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? He gave us angel's bread that tastes uh, that tastes like exactly what we wanted it to taste. You understand? Read. Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. You see that? But when he looked for us to actually do what he made us to do we brought forth wild grapes and give me that in wisdom of solomon 16 and 20 i ain't i ain't bring this one out in a minute going into the um the manna that he gave us in the wilderness it wasn't just no dry saltine crackers that's not what it was all right watch this give me um wisdom of solomon 16 20 Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16 and verse 20. Come on. Instead, whereof thou fedest thine own people with angels' food. Come on. And didst send them from heaven bread prepared without their labor. So we didn't even have to cook it. You understand? And we still rebelled against God. Read. Able to content every man's delight. So it says this angel's food was able to content every man's delight. Read. And agreeing to every taste. So if you like T-bone steak, it agreed with that taste. You understand? If you like strawberry shortcake, that's what it tastes like. But yet we still rebelled. Yet we still had a problem with the Most High. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 5, verse 4. Isaiah chapter You can't make it up. That, that's how you know. It, those are Negroes he was dealing with. That's how you know. All right, read it. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 4. Come on. What could have done? Been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it. Uh -huh. Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, it brought forth wild grapes. Come on. And now go to, and I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up. You see, it shall be eaten up because we did not esteem God's laws at the forefront. Okay, read on. And break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down, mm -hmm. and I will lay it waste, and it shall not be pruned nor digged. It shouldn't be kept anymore. All right, he's going to do what? Leave us to ourselves. Since we didn't want to follow what he said, we didn't want to follow those instructions, all right, 
Deal with it yourselves. Read. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged. But there shall come up briars and thorns. Mm -hmm. And I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. Let me ask you, what are those thorns? Let me see who studies. What are those thorns? Uh, hmm. Let me hear Malachi. What are those thorns? What is that? The um, thorns is going into the sins. No. I'll give one more. Uh, David, what you got? Um, on the trials and tribulations? No. I'll take one more. Oh, Gideon? Yeah, let's, let's hear Gideon. Shalom leadership. Mm -hmm. those, those wicked Israelites. Wait, wait, what? The wicked Israelites. The ones that don't follow the laws. Uh, let's go to J uh, Josh, Joshua real quick. 23. Joshua 23. Uh, one sec. Yes, 13. Joshua 23 and 13. Watch this. Joshua. So make sure you write this down. Joshua chapter 23 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations. From any of these what? Any of these nations. Any of these what? Nations. Read. Before, from before you. Come on. But they shall be snares and traps unto you uh -huh. and scourges in your sides. And thorns in your eyes. And what? And thorns in your eyes. Read. Until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. And in Judges 2 and 3. Let me go back. Judges chapter 2 verse 3. <clears throat> Judges chapter 2 and verse 3. Come on. Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides. And their gods shall be a snare unto you. You see, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. All right, so now let's go back to Isaiah 5. And that was verse, um, was that 6? Yeah, we finished 6. Yeah, yeah, let's read 6 again. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 6. Come on. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. That's going into a drought and famine. All right. So he uses what? He uses the same things. He uses the nations, famine, and pestilence to do what? To plague us whenever we go left. All right. Verse 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. So he's telling you that's who he planted. Okay. Come on. And the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. Mm -hmm. And he looked for judgment. But behold, his oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry. Right. We look for judgment, but we don't get it. Why? Because we sinned against God. So what did he do? He left us to our own ruin because of our sins. All right, from there, let's go to the book of Jeremiah, the 12th chapter. Jeremiah chapter 12. So the betrayal of our God. All right. Uh, read verse um, 10, I believe. Jeremiah, yep, chapter twelve and verse ten. Watch this. Many pastors. Tell you what. Tell you what. Start at seven. Jeremiah chapter twelve and verse seven. Come on. I have forsaken mine house. I have left mine heritage. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hands of her enemies. Y'all see, how he's saying the same thing. He said he's going to leave us to ourselves and send thorns against us. That's it. He's saying the same thing right here in verse seven. Read on. Verse 8. Mine heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. Mm -hmm. It crieth out against me. Therefore have I hated it. Read. Mine heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. Mm -hmm. The birds round about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field. Come to devour. Watch this. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. Right. So that's going into what? Leaders. Leaders leading the sheep astray. So it says, many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden down my portion underfoot. All right. So now, understand, okay, the past is the past. All we can do is press toward the mark. Give me that in Philippians 3.13 real quick. 
Give me Philippians 3 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. Come on. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high, of the high calling of God. In right. Christ I'm sorry. For the prize of the high calling of God. Read. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. So we have to what? We have to shake this off, and we got to keep pressing forward and learn from who? We got to learn from the examples of our forefathers, Romans 15 and 4. <clears throat> Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Because you have to understand, when we read these scriptures, we got to understand that we have to relate this to our actual lives, our personal lives with the Most High. Think about it. Even in your walk since you began to keep God's laws, you've turned your back on God, you understand, multiple times. All right, and we're going to go through the, the mercy God showed to the nation of Israel as well. All right, but we have to put ourselves in the same uh, shoes of our forefathers and relate. And then in return, we have to relate this to our relationships and be like, if the Most High God can forgive us, you understand, if he can forgive us for all of this wickedness over this long or this amount of time, we should be able to do the same thing to our brothers and our sisters. Okay, what I call Romans 15 and 4. Yeah, give me Romans 15 and 4. Watch this. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Come on. For whatsoever things were written aforetime mm -hmm. were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. We, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Because dealing with Israel, you have to have patience. Dealing with yourself, you have to have patience. Okay? And the Most High God, he shows us that thing. Sometimes, give me that in uh, the book of, um, I believe it's Sirach, the fourth chapter. He does the same thing with us individually. He'll leave us to ourselves so we can, you know, get it together. Um, One verse 17? Yeah, 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 that's what I want. The book of Sirach, chapter 4, and verse 17. Read that. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline. Until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. Right. So God is telling us that wisdom will walk with us with crooked ways, meaning like when you ain't all the way right, when you're still dabbling in sin. All right. And it says it will, it will torment you until wisdom can trust your soul. That's going into being loyal, noble, and honorable. Okay. Verse 18. Then. Will she return the straight way unto him uh -huh. and comfort him and show him her secrets? But the, the key is there is that when you turn away, you will get punished. You will get jacked up and judged. But understand, the most like he's not throwing you away. He's not throwing you away for good. And in return, we shouldn't treat each other like that. We shouldn't throw uh, each other away for good. It's only for a time until they get themselves together. Uh, keep reading. Verse 19, uh -huh. but if he go wrong, she will forsake him. Now, if they don't want to overcome, if they don't want to get back on the right side with God, it says that they will be forsaken, read. And give him over to his own ruin. So think about like this. If your brothers and sisters, they want to do good, but they made a mistake, we got to apply the same thing the most I do with us. Give me that in uh, Sirach 17, 24 and 25. You can never go over these things enough. Never. Read that. Sirach chapter 17 and verse 24. Come on. But unto them that repent, he granted them return and comforted those that failed in patience. Right. He comforted those that fell in patience. So we got to do the same thing to one another. Read on. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. There it is. So as long as a brother or sister ain't trying to go off back into wickedness a hundredfold, you still, you know, you got to deal with that brother or sister. Now, let's get back on topic. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah 11, verse 17. Jeremiah, tell you what, start at, um, uh, start at 14. Watch this. Jeremiah, chapter 11, and verse 14. Mm -hmm. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them. For I would not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. Remember, the most high he did what? He walked away from us. All right, he separated us. He left us to our ruin. He let the thorns come. All right, read. Verse 15. 
What hath my beloved to do in mine house, seeing she hath wrought lewdness with many? Uh huh. And the holy flesh is passed from thee. Come on. When thou doest evil, then thou rejoicest. And that's what you see today. Uh, during the radio show, we just went over an article about one of our sisters celebrating the fact that she had her breasts removed so she could be a man. You understand? That's what our people do. I actually read an article uh, this morning, I believe. You had some teenagers stab a girl in the heart, stabbed her to death, and she bled out in Walmart. And they said, I don't care if the bee is dead. That's what she get. You understand? Read the verse again. Verse 15. What hath my beloved to do in mine house, seeing she hath wrought lewdness with many? And the holy flesh is passed from thee. Mm -hmm. When thou doest evil, then thou rejoicest. That's, that's the type of wickedness our people are in the midst of. Uh, hold that. Give me Jeremiah 7 and 26. Hold that real quick. Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 26. Uh -huh. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor incline their ear, but hardened their neck. Uh -huh. They did worse than their fathers. There it is right there. We get worse and worse and worse as this thing keeps going on. That's why we know this, it, 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 it can't go on too much longer. Okay? Like it says, was that Matthew 24 and 13? I believe it says, uh, wickedness shall abound. Is that what it say? We'll read it. 20, is it 24 and 13? I think it is. Give me that real quick, and then we're coming right back to Jeremiah 11. Matthew 24, right? Yeah, Matthew 24. I'm not sure of the verse. Uh, not 13, 12. Verse 12? Yeah, yeah, 12. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. Come on. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right. The love of many shall wax cold. We're going to be worse than our fathers. Even though, think about it. Remember, our forefathers, they were responsible for doing what? Killing the prophets. You understand? So it's saying in this day and age, it's going to be even worse. Let's go back to Jeremiah 11 and 15. Jeremiah chapter 11 and verse 15. Come on. What hath my beloved to do in my house, seeing she hath wrought lewdness with many? Uh -huh. And the holy flesh is passed from thee. When thou doest evil, then thou rejoicest. Come on. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. Read. With the noise of a great tumult, he hath kindled fire upon it. Come on. And the branches of it are broken. Right. Started off, what, a goodly fruit, but the branches became broken. When you read the book of Romans 11... It's easy if you just know the history and the story of Israel. This is all it's talking about. It has nothing to do with the other nations. Let's read on. Verse 17. Uh -huh. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee. You see, the Lord of hosts that planted thee. Most I ain't ever plant no other uh, nations. Okay, come on. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee uh -huh. hath pronounced evil against thee. Come on. For the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah. So, Most I saying, he said, for your evil... The same way I planted you, now I'm going to pronounce evil against you. Read on. Which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and offering incense unto Baal. Drop that. Let's go to uh, Sirach, chapter 10. All right. So you see us what? We are not only committing iniquity, but we are rejoicing in it. It's one thing to be wicked, but just to be bold and cocky and, and be all right with it, that's, you got to throw, throw that thing away and start all over. Okay. Read what you got. You want verse 1, Cap? Verse 15, I'm sorry. The book of Sirach, chapter 10. Start at 14. Ta Sir start at 13, sorry. Sirach, chapter 10, and verse 13. Start at 12. Last one. And verse 12. Read that. The beginning of pride is when one departeth from God. Come on. And his heart is turned away from his maker. There it is. That's the beginning of pride right there, to commit sin and then boast about it. That's prideful, okay? Meaning what? You don't think you can get touched. That's how, that's how a lot of our people uh, behave themselves. Like they can't get touched by God. Read on. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath it shall pour out abomination. Come on. And that's and the thing that's hateful to God. Abomination is something hateful to God. Come on. And therefore the Lord brought up on them strange calamities uh -huh. and overthrew them utterly. Overthrew them utterly. Who that's talking about? That's talking about Israel. He overthrew us utterly. Come on. The Lord hath cast down the, the thrones of proud princes mm -hmm. and set up the meek in their stead. And set up the meek in their stead. Also, that's going into what? Uh, 
uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Um, what's his uh, grandson's name? Bel- Belshazzar. Right. And then what? Cyrus, he used Cyrus because Cyrus was after his heart. Cyrus would do what he actually told him to do. But then you look at us, too. He did the same thing to the nation of Israel. All right, read verse 14. Verse 14. Come on. The Lord hath cast down the thrones of the proud princes Mm -hmm. and set up the meek in their stead. Come on. The Lord hath plucked up the roots of the proud nation. You see that? He'll plant us, but he'll also do what? He'll pluck us up, too. Read verse 15 again. The Lord hath plucked up the roots of the proud nation. Come on. And planted the lowly in their place. Right. He can easily replace us. Um, Verse 16. The Lord overthrew countries of the heathens and destroyed them to the foundation of the earth. Mm -hmm. He took some of them away and destroyed them and has made their memorial to cease from the earth. All right, drop that. Let's go to, let me see. Give me 2 Maccabees 7. 2 Maccabees chapter 7, and I want verse 33. 2 Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 33. Read that. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while. Right. So to us, it seems like forever. All right. This captivity seems very drawn out, very long. Okay. Read the verse again. Verse 33. Come on. And thou the and though the living Lord be angry with us a little while. It for, says a little while. Come on. For our chastening and correction. It's all right. Read it a little bit slower, please. Read it again. And though the living Lord be angry with us. A little while for our chastening and correction. Right, for our chastening and correction. Like he said back in Jeremiah, he would leave us to ourselves. In Isaiah 5, he will leave us to ourselves, won't prune, won't prune the vineyard. He'll, he'll send thorns against it. He won't send any rain, right? So we can get our acts together. Read. Yet shall he be at one again with his servants. Right, but there's going to come a time where he'll be at one again with his servants. All right, from there, let's go to uh, Nehemiah 9. So we're going to do some reading in Nehemiah. All right, we're going to do from our Exodus in Egypt all the way up until the Persian captivity. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 9, and start at verse... Let's do six. <clears throat> Nehemiah chapter nine and verse six. Come on. Thou, even thou, art Lord alone and hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens with all the hosts, the earth and all things that are therein. Come on. The seas and all that is therein. And thou preservest them all. And the host of heaven worshipeth thee. Thou art the Lord God who didst choose Abram. And brought us him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees. So now it's what's going back into the history. All right. Read on. And gave us him the name of Abraham. Uh huh. And found us his heart faithful before thee. And made us a covenant with him to give to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Jebusites, and the Girgashites, to give it, I say, to his seed, and has performed thy words. For thou art righteous. And so let me ask y'all. It says. And found us his heart faithful before thee, and made us a covenant with him to give to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, and the Jebusites. What is that talking about, brothers? What land is that? Uh, Gideon. Israel. Israel. Very good. Just want to make sure. Verse 9, come on. Verse 9. And did it see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt, uh-huh. and heard us their cry by the Red Sea. Come on. And showed us signs and wonders upon Pharaoh, and on all his servants, and on all the people of his land. For thou knewest that, de- that they dealt proudly against them. So didst thou get thee a name, as it is this day. So y'all got to remember, what is God showing us? Look what we just read in uh, Sirach, was that, uh, 10. It says, against the proud nations, what does he do? He'll root them up. So the Most High God delivered us because why? We was humble. We cried unto him. And he delivered us out of the hand of a proud nation. But what did we do? We did the same thing. We became proud and we forgot the Most High. Okay, read on. Verse 11. And thou didst divide the sea before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on dry Land. Right. That's what he did for us. He performed those miracles. Remember, he said, what else can I do for them? I'm showing them I'm their God. I'm doing all of this for them. But yet they turn their back on me. Read. 
and their persecutors thou threwest into the deeps as a stone into the mighty waters. Come on. Moreover, thou leddest them in the day by a cloudy pillar. Come on. And in the night by a pillar of fire. Read. To give them light in the way wherein they should go. Right. Officer, bring that out. When we was in the wilderness, we were being guided by the, by the angel, which was Christ. Read. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai uh -huh. and speakest with them from heaven. And gave us them right judgments and true laws and good statutes and commandments. Which he gave to no other nation. He gave that to us and only us, but yet we forsook him. Come on. And made us known unto them thy holy Sabbath. Uh -huh. And commanded them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses thy servant. Read on. And gave us them bread from heaven for their hunger, mm -hmm. and brought us forth water for them out of the rock right, for the, their thirst. That bread of heaven was what? The manna, the angel's food. Come on. And promised them that they should go in to possess the land which thou hadst sworn to give them. Uh -huh. But they and our fathers dealt proudly. You see? It says, but as soon as we caught out, what did we do? We started behaving proudly just like the nation God just destroyed for our sake. Read that verse again, verse 16. But they and our fathers dealt proudly uh -huh. and hardened their necks. And then remember, when we read the book of Jeremiah, this is the the uh, the generation that was actually in Egypt and got let out. It says what? We behave worse than our fathers. So think about that. Think about the level of evil that the nation of Israel is rolling in today. Okay? Read verse 16 again. But they and our fathers dealt proudly. And hardened their necks, mm -hmm. and hearkened it not to thy commandments, Read on. and refused to obey. Neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them. They forgot. We forgot everything God just did. The Red Sea being part. It's never happened, and it does not happen normally. Right? But yet we forget about that just because we hungry. Just because we go through a little affliction. Give me Psalms 31 and 7. Just because we go through a little affliction, brothers and sisters, a lot of the times we say, you know what, this is too hard for me. I'm just going to give in. And that's what we read, reading right here with our forefathers. The most I got, he know our hearts. He know if we loyal to him or down for him. You understand? What our brothers, how we treat each other. Are you really loyal? Or as soon as something ha happened, a little follow happened, you show your true colors, that you really wasn't down for your brothers and sisters. You understand? Uh, read it. Psalms 31 and verse 7. Come on. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversities. Let's, let's read it again, please. Verse 7. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversities. You see, God knows our soul in adversity. God knew, he knew this, uh, the souls of the Israelites. That they were what? That they were stubborn and rebellious. Also, brothers, anytime something gets hard or when things get hard in our personal lives, we have to do what? We got to remember how our forefathers treated the Most High. And wasn't he very angry with them? So we got to apply that and be like, no, 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 okay. It may be getting hard right now, but I know what he did for my forefathers. I know the intentions. I know they had to go through the wilderness. I know they was hungry for a little bit, but he provided every time, didn't he? So we got to think, we got to be, you know, we got to be on the same page. We got to understand, like, yeah, it's hard right now. He's doing that to do what? Prove us, okay? Uh, Deuteronomy 8 and 2, basic precepts, but we need these things constantly. Because we're going to be tried every week, every day. Okay? These precepts got to be uh, put to memory right here. Deuteronomy 8 and 2. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2. Come on. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee from these 40 years in the wilderness. You see? It's the same thing. You have to remember that. God led us. He never forsook us. Read. To humble thee. Uh-huh. To do what? To humble thee. Uh, read that verse again. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2. Come on. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. These 40 years in the wilderness, read. To humble thee. To humble thee. Brothers and sisters, the reason why we go through trials is for what? To humble us. Because a lot of us, we think we all of that. We think we got it all together. We think that we can't fall. You crazy. You crazy as hell. You better, you better walk lowly because as soon as you what? You get that pomp about you. You start feeling yourself. 
that's when you're going to get your legs taken from under you. It's going to happen every time. Read on. To humble thee. To humble us. That's what our trials and our afflictions are for. That's why adversity comes, to humble us, to, to make us realize what? That we need God. You understand? Read. And to prove thee. And to do what? And to prove thee. And to prove thee. Let's go back to Nehemiah. Let's finish this out. Nehemiah 9 and 17, I believe. Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 17. Come on. And refused to obey. Neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them, and but hardened their necks, and in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. But thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and great and of great kindness, and forsookest them not. You see that? We got to roll the same way. It says, and forsookest them not, even though we deserve to be forsooked. Understand that thing right there. Come on. Verse 18, uh -huh. yea, when they had made them a molten calf. And when said, Moses is up getting the, the laws, we down there getting it in with a golden calf. Come on. Yea, when they ma had made them a molten calf and said, this is thy God that brought thee up out of Egypt and had wrought great provocations. Read. Yet thou and thy manifold mercies. Manifold mercies. We can't even count the Lord's mercies. We can't count the Lord's mercies. None of us should be living right now. Read. Yet thou in thy manifold mercies forsookest them not in the wilderness. Come on. The pillar of the cloud departed not from them by day Read. to lead them in the way. Neither the pillar of fire by night to show them light and the way wherein they should go. Come on. Thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them. And withheldest not thy manna from their mouth. Come on. And gavest them water for their thirst. Uh huh. Yea, forty years did thou sustain them in the wilderness, so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes waxed not old, their feet swelled not. Wait a minute. So you can I know in tabernacles, if you go on a hike for three hours, what start happening to your feet? You already know. Dang, I gotta change my socks. I'm getting blisters on my big toe. You understand? Read the verse again. Verse 21. Yea, for 40 years didst thou sustain them. For 40 years. For 40 years straight. Read. Thou didst sustain them in the wilderness Come on. so that they lacked nothing. We didn't lack anything. Read. Their clothes waxed not old. We wore the same clothes for 40 years. That's something you can't really fathom. And they didn't stink. They didn't wear away. You understand they wasn't raggedy. Read. Their clothes waxed not old, and their feet swelled not. After what? Walking in the wilderness all of that time. That's what God did for us, and yet we still turn our back on them. Come on. Moreover, thou gavest them kingdoms and nations, and didst divide them into the corners. Uh -huh. So they possessed the land of si Sihon. Sihon, and the land of the king of Heshbon. And the land of Og, king of Bashan. Come on. Their children also multiplied thou as the stars of heaven. So God multiplied us as the stars of heaven, meaning what? As that great multitude. Read on. And brought us them into the land concerning which thou hadst promised to their fathers uh -huh. that they should go in to possess it. Come on. So the children went in and possessed the land. And thou shouldest subdue before them the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites. And gave us them into their hands. Right. That's the Canaanites, like uh, Gideon said earlier, this land of Israel. But they were the original inhabitants. Come on. With their kings and the people of the land, that they might do with them as they would. God gave us that strength. It wasn't us. That's the issue. We think it's us majority of the time. Read. Verse 25. Come on. And they took strong cities and a fat land and possessed houses full of all goods, mm -hmm. well, wells digged, vineyards, and olive yards. And fruit trees in abundance. So we just stumble, you know, like the kid, you know, the, the the young generations they hit a lick. You understand? We just came and like, dang, everything's here. We ain't robbing stuff. So let me not say things like that. But we came and it was prepared for us. You understand? We had to work for nothing. It was there, it was ready. Read. So they did eat and were filled and became fat and delighted them. Delighted themselves in thy great goodness. That's what it says. Was that uh, Deuteronomy 32? It says, and Jeshuron wax fat. That's what it's talking about. We wax fat and kicked. Meaning what? We rebelled against God. 
That's what it's going into. Read. Verse 26. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, they were disobedient uh -huh. and rebelled against thee and cast thy law behind their backs. You see? And, oh. sh and slew thy prophets, which testified against them to turn them to thee. You see that? God gave us all of that. And he sent prophets to warn us before we got overthrown. They said, uh, we don't want to listen to your prophets, so we're going to kill them. That's how wicked we became. Read. And they wrought great prov provocations. And you got to understand, God, he sent the prophets to what? To keep us from going into captivity. Why he sent Jonah? Because he's like, hey, if y'all don't get this right, the Assyrians is going to come get y'all. You understand? He sent the prophets because he loved us. But we hated God's law so much, we killed the prophets. We killed the messengers of God. Let's drop that. Uh, let's go to 1 Timothy 1. So we're going to change it real quick. I'm going to try to make this the 10, 15-minute version. 1 Timothy chapter 1, and I want verse 12. <clears throat> 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. So at this point, we all realize that we do not deserve God's manifold uh, mercies, do we? Absolutely not. Uh, read this. Verse 12. Come on. And I thank Christ Jesus, uh -huh. our Lord, who hath enabled me. For that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. So this is who? This is Apostle Paul. Uh, he's, he said he's thanking, thanking Christ Jesus for allowing him to be over the ministry. Read. Verse 13. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy. But he obtained mercy. Did Paul deserve mercy? No. But God still gave it to him. Read. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Right. He said he did it ignorantly, ignorantly in unbelief. That unbelief is what? Going against the commandments of God. He persecuted the, the church. He killed many. But God still found him faithful. All right? So we got to count. We got to do what? You got to count our blessings. Because all of us, I know all of us was in some type of sin before we got up in here. Let's go through some of those sins. Give me Exodus 21 and 12. Let's go through some of those sins. And we're going to show you through, the, through these scriptures that all of these sins are what? Worthy of death. Worthy of death. Read that. Exodus chapter 21 and verse 12. Come on. He that smiteth a man so that he die shall be surely put to death. What's that called? It's called murder. Now, is murder only taking someone's life? Y'all already know that. Having hatred for your brother, that's murder. And that's a sin worthy of death. All right. From there. Give me uh, Leviticus 20 and verse 2. Leviticus 20 and 2. This is something that's running rampant in, in our communities right here. Read that. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 2. Come on. Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, whosoever he be of the children of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, mm -hmm. that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. Right, giving your seed to Molech is what having your child pass through the fire. That's called what today, brothers? Abortion. And it said, you shall what? Reader. And he shall surely be put to death. Abortion, right. Because, hey, that brother's just as guilty. All right, because the only person he should be sowing his seed with is what? His wife. And a lot of times the sisters, because they ain't married to that dude, they don't have an abortion. And just because you didn't go to the doctor's office, you're still guilty of that same thing because you did not follow the commandment of God. But all praises for repentance, right? There you go. All, well, we have to count our blessings because all of us should be not here today. Okay? Leviticus 21 and 9. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 9. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 9. Come on. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore uh -huh. or profane her father, she shall be burnt with fire. Then she shall be burnt with fire. You played the whore. Okay. Having what? Sex with multiple men. Brothers, whoremongers having sex with multiple women. Hey, the law says you shall be burnt with fire. Okay. From there, let's go to Exodus 22 and 20. Who in here was in a different religion before you, before you got here? Anybody? Anybody? Everybody, every, everybody was just, okay. You was in some type of religion, whether you uh, went into a building or not. You could have been praising yourself. You wasn't in nothing? All right, so you thought your ways was better, so you was praising yourself. That was your religion. You were searching. Ah, give me that. Give me Exodus 22 and 20. Exodus chapter 22 <laughs> 
in verse 20. Come on. He that sacrifices unto any God, save unto the Lord only, he shall be utterly destroyed. He shall be utterly destroyed. So all of us was guilty of worshiping somebody else that was not in his Bible. Okay, so we should all be destroyed for that. Last one, give me Leviticus 20 and 9, and we'll get back to it. Leviticus 20 and verse 9. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 9. Come on. For everyone that curseth his father or Uh-oh, his... it says what? For everyone that curseth his father... You children, you better listen up too. Read it again. For everyone that curseth his father or his mother... Come on. ...shall be surely put to death. You see that? You see that? It wasn't no if, ands, or but. Disrespectful children did not last back in the day. Let's read it again. Verse 9. Come on. For everyone that curseth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. And I'm giving glory to the Most High too because I was bad as hell when I was younger. I was very, very bad. But the Most High showed mercy. Okay, read that all the way through. For everyone that curseth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. Come on. He hath cursed his father or his mother. His blood shall be upon him. So his blood should be upon him. Showing you what? There's, there's many laws, all right? There's many instances where a lot of us sh- should have been put to death, all right? But just like we read in Paul's example, all praise to the Father, mercy was granted unto us, okay? From there, let's go to uh, Luke 17. So in turn, if a brother trespass against us, what should we do? We got to have mercy. We have to have mercy. Manifold mercies, meaning what? Infinite Okay, start at Sirach 28 and 7, then give me Luke 17 and 1. We almost done. You said 28 and 7? Yes. Sirach, chapter 28 and verse 7. Come on. Remember the commandments and bear no malice towards thy neighbor. It says, remember the commandments of God and bear no malice towards thy neighbor. Read. No, No pettiness, no grudgeful acts. Read. Remember the covenant of the highest uh-huh. and wink at ignorance. Wink at ignorance. Wink at ignorance because it's going to happen. People are going to do little things. Bro, why'd you? All right, all right. All right, we cool. We cool. I can get over that. That's how we have to operate. Now, give me Luke 17 and 1. Luke chapter 17 and verse 1. Come on. Then said he unto the disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses will come. Right. Ignorant things is, you know, offenses, they're going to happen. Read. But woe unto him through whom they come. You know. Where where it excuse me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast in the, into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Right, come on. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. Right, bring him back. That's the same thing God did with us, right? Oh, damn. Hey, all, hey, hey, I know that's what he did for me. You understand? That's the same thing God did for us. Okay? Read. Verse 4. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. So let me ask, can we count how many times we transgressed against God? No, you can't. You can't do it. Read the verse again. Verse 4. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Thou shalt forgive him. Why? Because God forgave us. Read. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. You see that thing right there? They saying like, I don't know how we're going to do this. You got to increase my faith, Christ. Hey, but that's what we got to get. That's what he's commanding us. He didn't say you may forgive him. You said He said thou shalt forgive him. Okay? Uh, from there, we almost done. Give me Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22. Lamentations 3 and 22. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22. Come on. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. You see? It says it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Mind you, when we was in Sirach, he said there's certain nations that he decided to do away with for good. <laughs> you understand that? Meaning what? You, you're na- this nation, you just don't exist anymore. That could have been us. But all praises for God's manifold mercies. Read it again. Verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because, he, because of his compassions fail not. His compassions fail not. So we got to be 
uh, com- uh, affectionate, compassionate one toward another. Okay. Uh, from there, let's go to Amos 9 and 15. Two more scriptures and we're done. Amos 9 and 15. All right. So it's our, what is it? What's the name of today's class? You know, I always forget. The betrayal against, against our God, right? Something like that. The God of Israel. There it is. Read it. Amos chapter 9. You said verse 15? Yep. In verse 15. Come on. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them. So this is going into his manifold uh, mercies. So it's saying in that day, he's going to establish us again just because he loves us that much. But this time we got to be right. Okay, we can't be wicked like before. We got to get things together. Give me that in uh, Psalms 18.23. Then we're coming right back. Psalms 18.23. Psalms chapter 18 and verse 23. Come on. Excuse me. 18 and verse 23. Mm -hmm. I was also upright before him. And I kept myself from mine iniquity. Right. We in these last days we have to keep ourselves from our iniquities. All right. Amos nine fifteen again. Amos nine and verse fifteen. Come on. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land. We won't be rooted up anymore. All right. As long as we could do what? As long as we could turn away from our iniquities. Read. Which I have given them. Thus, excuse me. Say it, the Lord thy God. Mm-hmm. That's it on that. Yes, sir. Go to Jeremiah twenty four. Jeremiah 24 and 6. Jeremiah chapter 24 and verse 6. Come on. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. Right, and not pluck us up. Last scripture, Isaiah 60 and 21. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 21. Isaiah. Chapter 60 and verse 21. Come on. Thy people also shall be all righteous. Right. Thy people will all be righteous because they were able to overcome their iniquities while being proved. Read. They shall inherit the land forever. For how long? Forever. Come on. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. And this is what God intended all along. All right. But understand, we went through this long journey. We went the long route. Because of we, we love pleasures more than serving God, all right? All right, so be mindful. Be mindful, brothers and sisters. That's the end of today's class. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.